Hey friend, did I tell you about this friend of mine who had to quit his developer job? Oh no, really? Yeah, he couldn't get a raise. He couldn't get a raise. <laughs> Welcome to Headless WP Rocks. In our last video, we put WP GraphQL and the WordPress REST API head to head in an epic battle uh, to figure out which of those would be the best kind of API to use for headless WordPress projects. In part of that video, I describe how WP GraphQL turns your WordPress backend into what's called a data graph. And then I said that uh, we can enter the data graph at any point and then query for our data based on the fields and connections that exist within that data graph. Uh, so in this video, we'll dig deeper into what that data graph term actually is. Um, and we'll even use a tool called GraphQL Voyager, where we can visually see the entire WordPress data graph that WP GraphQL provides for us. So it's pretty cool. You're going to want to check that out. Uh, you'll come away from this video with a good understanding of what the WordPress data graph looks like, as well as terms associated with it, uh, like nodes and edges and connections and fields. Uh, so let's dive into it. Here I am on the graphql.org site, and you can see that they have a thinking and graphs page here. So let's read two quick sentences. Uh, this says, with GraphQL, you model your business domain as a graph by defining a schema. Within your schema, you define different types of nodes and how they connect or relate to one another. On the client, this resembles a pattern similar to object-oriented programming, types that reference other types. Uh, and this is kind of where the GraphQL logo itself comes from. So if you ever pay attention to this logo, um, this is representative of nodes. So the circles here would be nodes in your data graph, and then the lines between them uh, would represent connections. Uh, in WordPress, that data graph would look something like this, um, if it was oversimplified anyway, uh, where you have you know, different types of nodes like posts and media, um, library items, terms, pages, comments, users, and then uh, there are connections between those things. So you can start querying for a post and then based on that, get you know, taxonomy terms or get the user who wrote it and then info about that other node and so on. Um, so a slightly more complex example might look like this. So you could um, enter your data graph, let's say, uh, by getting a post, and you could say, I want uh, all the categories related to that post as well as just the title. So here we are, you know, uh, getting the title, and then you can see we've gotten this category and some info about it, like its name and its image, um, and it has no posts associated with it. Uh, the other category we got, you can see it has its, its name, it has an image, but this category actually has other posts associated with it. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and follow uh, this edge right here, uh, or this connection between that category and another post, and then proceed to get even more data about that. So this kind of shows how these nodes are interconnected. Next, let's head over to a WordPress site that I have running locally here. Um, you can see I have two plugins, WP GraphQL, and then this Headless WordPress Rockers um, one right here. And it, this plugin is just a single file that looks like this. You can see I'm registering a project post type here. And then crucially, I'm doing three, th three things. I'm uh, setting show in GraphQL to true so that WP GraphQL knows it's okay to expose this post type in the uh, public GraphQL schema. And then I'm defining the single name and then the plural name uh, that it should use um, in the GraphQL schema. And then beyond that, I'm registering one uh, field. So I'm hooking into GraphQL register types and calling register GraphQL fields. And I'm saying for the project type, you know, whose name we um, defined up here, add one additional field called project number. And then um, we're defining that that is, is a string and we're returning ABC123. So the reason I'm doing these two things is to show that after I've added some things to my GraphQL schema, I'm able to uh, load that up in GraphQL Voyager, which we'll see in a minute, and then see my changes. So I'll see the uh, project nodes and I'll see the fields that exist on that, one of which will be this project number here. I also want to make sure we understand the difference between uh, querying for nodes and for edges, because uh, I get a fair amount of questions from folks new to WP GraphQL 
about which one of those to use. So let me show you what I mean. So back in the WordPress admin, if I go to GraphQL and then Graph Graphical IDE, um, let's fire off a query here. So uh, query for posts. And then as soon as you get to this level, you have a decision to make. Um, inside a post, you can query for edges or you can query for nodes. So we'll go for edges and they'll say for each of the nodes, we want uh, the database ID and then the title of that post, let's say. So if we query based on that, then we get back the data in the same shape. So we get posts, edges, node, and then the two details we wanted. So that's great. Um, if you spend a little more time poking around though, and maybe uh, you know exploring the GraphQL schema and what's available to you in the Explorer pane over here, uh, you quickly figure out though, you don't actually have to have uh, this level of nesting. You can actually skip edges right here and go straight to nodes. Uh, so for another example, we'll just name uh, that query one and we'll have another one. So now we'll fire off query number two and see what we get back. So here when the data comes back, you can see it follows uh, that same shape where we get uh, posts and then nodes, which is what's inside of that, followed by our data, database ID and title. So just glancing at these, you know, if you're new to GraphQL, um, you might ask yourself, why? what's this edges thing all about? It looks like ultimately each of my nodes has exactly the same data when it comes back. So why would I use the more verbose um, edges and then you know, node when I can instead just query straight for the nodes? Like why, why do both of these even exist? It looks like they're uh, giving me the same result. Um, so let's answer that question. We'll uh, explore the WordPress data graph and you know, see why those both exist and why you might want to use one versus the other to get a better understanding there. Um, so we can use a tool called GraphQL Voyager, as I mentioned. So if you just Google GraphQL Voyager or head to this uh, URL, um, you'll land on something that looks like this. So when you first um, land on it, it'll load up um, the Star Wars uh, GraphQL API here. And if you go to change schema, you can change to something else. So it has all the Star Wars films and people and so on. If you go to change schema, you can choose one of these other popular GraphQL APIs, kind of explore what those look like. Uh, what we're gonna do is explore our own. Uh, so if you click introspection right here, um, you can copy the introspection query. So we'll click that and it says copied. Now back in our WordPress site, we need to execute that. So I'll get rid of my um, test queries right here and I will paste in this big introspection query right here. In my last video, I mentioned how GraphQL has this introspection feature where you can ask it, ask GraphQL for data, not only about the nodes and connections and data in your app, but actually you can ask it for data about itself. You can query for the graph itself. Um, so if we run this query, we should get our results back. So there we go. Uh, when the data comes back on the right-hand side, we can highlight and copy all of this and then paste it right here. So this is the results of your introspection query. So I'll paste those in and then hit display. So load for a second and then shazam, here we are. So this is what you get. This is the entire WordPress data graph. Um, I know you can see nothing at this point because we're super zoomed out, uh, but we can zoom in and explore some of these um, different things in more detail. So each of these um, items you see would, would be nodes and then all these lines um, are connections between them. So let's explore this data graph in a little more detail. Um, I'll hit the plus icon to zoom a little bit, and then we'll start over on the left, how about? So this is where you enter your data graph. Whenever you fire off a, a, a root query, then these are all of the fields on that. So you can see here's my project custom post type I had added, or if I want to query for multiple projects, you'll see that that's on the list here as well. I also have everything else that um, the WP GraphQL plugin provides. So I can query for comments, all kinds of media items, the settings that WordPress has, info about plugins and themes, about posts, pages, users, all of those things um, originate here in this root query. And you can follow the, the connection lines as well or click on these to jump to uh, the associated node. Uh, so for project, for instance, you can see that if I click on this connection, it gives me this you know red line so you could uh, follow it up and over, and that will lead us to the project node. So here it is. So here's all the info I can query about projects. Um, if I would have added support to this post type for um, author or for content and so on, I would see some more fields here 
um, but because I hadn't added support for those, it gives me just this list of uh, the things that I can query in addition to my one custom field. So you remember I had registered the custom field called project number, and you can see that's right here on the list. So project number is a string. Um, so that's been added to our GraphQL schema. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see what else we can find. Um, here's like media items. So when you query for um, items in the WordPress media library, uh, th these are all the fields available. Here are comments. So more info about media items right there. Um, here's all the info that you can query about users here, including their, their avatars. And then after that, we get into pages right here. Here's all the data we can query. And then WordPress blog posts as well. So posts would be here. And a few other things off in the corner, like taxonomies and um, like categories and tags and, and so on. So this is pretty cool. Just, um, you know, out of curiosity, if you um, make some changes to your GraphQL schema and then head to the site and paste in the results of your introspection query, then you can kind of pan and zoom around and take a look at, you know, what your new data graph actually looks like to get a really good visual of what's available to you. So let me hit the reset button and we'll zoom all the way out. And uh, we'll talk about those edges and nodes. So imagine I'm firing off that first query for posts and I need to make that decision about whether I'm querying for um, edges or going straight for the nodes. Um, and I need to know, you know, which, which is appropriate. So let me zoom in a little. Zooming is a little finicky on this app, but we'll get it right. So on the root query here, we'll find posts since that's what we want to query right here. And then click on that to highlight the connection in red right here. Um, so for starting with the root query and we are querying based on posts, this red line represents the edge and the edge itself can have data on it. So it looks something like this. Let me explain that a bit more. Um, so I whipped up this, this drawing real quick to describe what edge data is. So in my GraphQL schema, I can have a post and that's a node and I can have a user and that's another node. We, and each of those can have their own data, right? They can have their own fields, but there's also such a thing as edge data. So it's data that is contextual, that lives right here. It only kind of makes sense if these two have a relationship with each other, then that data actually makes sense. So a good example of this is uh, WP GraphQL has a piece of edge data called uh, lock timestamp. And that has to do with, um, in WordPress, if a user is currently editing a post, uh, then WordPress is aware of that. And if somebody else tries to edit it, you know, they get uh, the lock screen, you know, um, in the UI, in the WordPress admin, it says that, you know, user such and such is currently editing this post. Uh, do you want to go back or take over editing um, that screen? If you're familiar with WordPress, you've probably seen before. That's a good example of edge data, right? Where uh, that timestamp that WordPress stores to keep track of, you know, which users work, working on a current post you know, ask yourself, is that data about the post? I would say no, it's, you know, that timestamp isn't, has, doesn't have to do with the post itself. Now ask yourself, does that timestamp have to do with the user? Again, I would say not really, that timestamp doesn't have to do with the user itself. It's kind of contextual, right? It kind of belongs out here where if the user is currently working on the post, then that piece of data that, you know, that connects them um, would be, that edge, edge data. So with that knowledge that we should query for edges if we want some of that contextual edge data versus query for nodes if we don't care about edge data and just want you know the nodes um, inside of that, uh, we can go ahead and compose our query again for posts. So we'll say query get posts and start with posts. And at this point, this is when we had to make that decision between edges and nodes. Um, so I'll, I'll do edges again and we'll see what's available to us there. So if I hit control space, you can see that I can drill down to each node as I had last time, but I also do have one piece of that contextual edge data uh, and it's called the cursor. So this is um, a unique identifier for, for this particular node. And as the um, description says here, it's particularly useful for pagination where if you've gotten the first you know, 10 posts, you can grab the cursor of the last one and then fire off another query telling WP GraphQL, now I want another 10, but don't start at the beginning, instead start after 
the post with this cursor on it. Uh, so that can be very useful for, for pagination. Um, so let's do that. I'll get the cursor for each of those edges. And now for each node, I'll say I want the database ID and then the title, just as I had before. So now when I fire that off, you see I get on each of my edges, I get the cursor for that particular node, and then I get the data about the node itself. Um, so in this case, if I wanted the cursor like that, then edges is the proper um, thing to do. That's what I would want a query for. Otherwise, if the query I'm firing off, I don't care about cursor or any other edge you know, data that may exist. In that case, um, I would skip edges and go straight for the nodes because I'll just um, give you the data that you want right here with one level um, less of nesting. Let's add two last things to our query, and then we'll go through this and think about what we're actually querying for in terms of our data graph. Um, so I'll also, I'll also say for this post, I want info about the author. And for that node, I want uh, the person's name. Okay, in addition to author, I also want the categories that this blog post has. And for each of those, uh, I'll just go straight for nodes. I don't care about the edges in this case, let's say. Um, I just wanna go straight for the nodes and I'll get the name of the category. So there's our query. Uh, so when you're composing your queries like that in the WordPress backend, I think it's helpful to have that visual of you know the data, the data graph um, that looks like this in an oversimplified example, but looks like this in a very detailed, literal you know, example where you're seeing every single field and, and connection here. So thinking through this query, let's see what we're actually querying for. So starting from the root query, I'm saying I want posts. Um, now posts are, are a, a type of node and I'm saying I want you know, a collection of them, I want multiple posts. So right here, I'm, this is a connection between the root query and the post um, nodes. So right there, we have to make a decision about whether we're gonna go for edges or nodes, as we said. And we've decided we're going for edges because we want some of that contextual data that lives between um, the root query in this case and each of our posts. And the edge data we want specifically is the cursor. Uh, so for us, that means instead of post user for us, it's a root query on one side and post on the other and our edge data that we're wanting is the cursor. All right, um, then after that we're saying for each of the individual post nodes, I want a few fields then. So the uh, database ID and title uh, would be fields that live on that post node. And we're gonna make use of a few other connections as well. So this author right here, this is representative of a connection between the, po the individual post node right here and a user object, the person who is the author of the post. And then we're saying for that author node, I want the name. So this would be a field that lives on the user, right? Um, so in uh, GraphQL Voyager, I can type user and then tap on that to jump to user. So here's user and then we're querying for name this field that exists on that, that checks out. Uh, and then for categories, likewise, we're querying for nodes and then name. So here we are, we're saying for each category node out of all the fields available, uh, return the name. So hopefully that's helpful to be able to put together your, uh, your GraphQL queries and then have some visual, you know, some sense of, okay, I'm querying based on the edge data, because I need that contextual data between two nodes versus I'm just going straight for uh, the nodes. Like in this case, I don't care about the cursors or any other edge data. Instead, just give me the, the collection um, of those nodes that I'm interested in. So hopefully at this point, you feel like you're familiar with what the WordPress data graph looks like roughly, and you have some tools at your disposal to uh, load up your own GraphQL schema from your WordPress site, and then pan and zoom around and kind of explore all of the fields and connections and so on that are available uh, for your WordPress backend. Um, also, I hope you walked away from this video with a good understanding of when to query uh, based on edges, if you want any of that contextual edge data between nodes versus just querying for the nodes uh, directly. Uh, thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next one. Did you like that? Go ahead and push that like button. Subscribe.